Welcome to the latest in Redwoods podcast series. We're talking to SAP experts and those on the front line to look at some of the technical issues and challenges around SAP and finance and accounting processes. I'm Andy McHugh, tech journalist and editor, and I'm joined by finance transformation expert, Adrian Lee. Today's topic is controls and validations in SAP. So we'll be looking at why they're important, how they work, what are some of the issues and challenges, and ultimately how automation can help you run these uh, more continuously, consistently, and uh, reduce errors, fraud, and, and manual efforts. So Adrian, let's let's dive straight in. Um, what are some of the typical SAP controls and validations that we see around finance and associated processes, and how do they work? So it's, it's about really making sure that the financial records in SAP, Andy, are complete, accurate and valid and reflect what's happening in the business. So the, the finance records reflect what's, you know, what's going on in, in the real world of the business. Um, so there are a number of different checks. So, you know, month end checks, end of day checks. So it could be things like checking for uh, abnormal or adverse purchase price variances, which might indicate pricing errors. It's, it's about doing checks around things like uh, our costs on track and uh, within budget. Um, it's about making sure that the stock figures look uh, reasonably accurate on a, on a day-to-day basis, which, which can be really important for some businesses. Um, but it's a, it's a very manual process. And typically there is a team of experts that are doing these, these con- control and validation checks within most major organizations. Yeah, so it's, it's more highly skilled. Before we get into some of the issues, I mean, I guess it's worth just reminding ourselves really why why these controls and checks are important and what are some of the ways uh, that, that not having them or having a lack of them causes some very real business problems. Yeah, so quite often companies find out the hard way that uh, the, there's an issue or a challenge in their SAP system. And you know, one of the bigger issues or challenges is, is often around stock. So it may well be that uh, you get a large order from a customer, you, you go and try and fulfill that order, and you, you see that, that there's no stock, even though you know there should be. So quite often, it's things like the uh, actual stock figures in SAP don't reflect the physical stock position, so that when you try and sell something, you can't because SAP doesn't see that stock. Uh, so companies find out the hard way when they're actually trying to do something that their SAP system doesn't reflect the reality of their business at that point in time. Um, and that's how uh, the controls are really, or the need for the controls are, are, are kind of really identified by, uh, by, by businesses. Uh, but also things like uh, pressure at period end to, to find and detect errors. You know, it's, it's making sure that there are sufficient activities going on to to flush out any errors that have happened during the period. Uh, quite often, that's a big focus as well, um, because obviously we've we've talked before about the consequences of uh, of uh, misreporting or misstating financial results in the reporting cycles for for large businesses. So, in terms, of, obviously, the first step is clearly to have these in place. So, you know, how does that kind of work typically? Um, at the moment? A lot of the uh, controls are put in place are either on a reactive basis, as we mentioned in the, uh, in, 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 uh, previously, that you know, there's, been, there's been an error or a fraud or some issue, uh, some challenge that, uh, that has to, have, uh, to, to be identified and flushed out of the business. So quite often you get a reactive control or a validation put in place to, if, if you like, plug that gap. But more typically, what, what organ, organizations tend to do is to uh, invest in what's, what's often referred to as a controls framework. Um, and uh, that controls framework will um, put in place all of the checks and balances that are required to try and make sure that the, the books of account and the SAP system reflects the reality of the business. But presumably, so obviously controls and validations is good. That's like a... a, a a good tick to have but the execution is still pretty manual you've got highly skilled presumably expensive people spending a lot of time on doing this um, and you may still not be getting uh, the kind of results you need from it there's still stuff uh, kind of being missed so um, you know what's the better way to do this you know how can automation help Um, you know 
just just explain that in a bit more detail for us yeah and it, it's a good point andy because at the end of the day it's you know it's one thing knowing that there's been an issue or or, or a, a, a challenge created to the data in sap but but ultimately it, it has to be about improving your process because if you are persistently getting uh control and validation failures in in in, in processes then it, it points to a, a, a sort of a more fundamental issue there so um you know, and quite often it's people just being set in their ways and doing things in, in a particular way that, that becomes the challenge. And uh, you have to use this data to then go back and really try and improve the process to eliminate this. Because in an ideal world, the controls and validation checks should all go through 100% each and every time, you know, in an ideal world. And only exceptionally do you have a problem. Um, but that's that's the plan is to really use this data, not only to confirm that, SAP is complete, accurate, and valid and reflects the business, but also that your processes are robust and resilient and execute the way that you want them to each and every time. Mm -hmm. So obviously the goal is to to, re to remove a lot of that, that manual effort around controls and improve the process. I mean, so how, how do you go about automating it and, and why should you do it? You know, what are the benefits of doing that? So as, as we mentioned, the, you know, most organizations, there's a team of, of experts, typically a highly skilled team of experts doing the controls and validation checks uh, on a, a day, week, month basis. Uh, and, and the plan would be with automation is to really eliminate a lot of the manual effort that those highly skilled people are doing on, on, uh, on a day to day basis. So that would be the first thing is to to kind of automate those those largely manual checks. Um, the second part of that is to to really try and improve the processes as we talked about. So taking the feedback and the the data that you get from the, the control and validation checks and then feeding that back into a a process improvement uh, um, uh, procedure or project that you may have running uh, within the business. So. Um, you know, uh, one example I've been involved in was at uh, Arla, the uh, global dairy co dairy company, where they they actually had a very very uh, strong uh, controls and validation uh, framework in place, uh, but that needed quite a substantial team of people to execute those control and validation checks. Um, so Arla started to automate those those checks and use the automation to really drive down. Um, the consistency and speed those checks are performed with, but also the size of team that's required to uh, to sustain those checks. Yeah, great. So, so just leading on from that, really, I mean, just tell us a bit more about those key benefits. You know, that you talked about the uh, the consistency, uh, the efficiency, um, you know, the documentation of, of these of these checks and spotting errors and issues throughout the month. Yeah. So, uh, to give you an example and to frame this. If you have a team of say 50 highly skilled people that are doing these checks on a frequent basis, um, you know, and that could be a typical team size for, for, for this uh, area of business. Um, obviously they have a finite number of person hours, you know, eight hour day, 50 people and so on. So that in itself limits the, the capacity, if you like, to do these checks. Uh, which again will potentially impact the the quality of the data in your SAP system. So certainly one of the benefits is that with automation, not only do you eliminate potentially the manual effort in in performing the tests, but you also gain capacity. So you can do the tests more frequently, which again can impact the uh, uh, the quality and improve the quality of data in SAP. Uh, consistency as well. You know, at the end of the day, if you're doing stuff manually, we're all humans. We make mistakes. We we have good days and bad days. Um, with automation, it's it's always performed 100% accurately based on the rules you've defined to the automation, and also it's documented. the The actual checks and validations that are being performed are fully documented in the automation platform itself. Um, again, in my experience, uh, apart from the control frameworks that are often very well documented by the consultancies that are employed to, to put these in place. Um, quite often, the actual physical checks that are performed manually are not that well documented. Um, and I think as a consequence of all of those benefits, it means that you can, you can spot errors and issues through automation much earlier in the, in the month 
uh, than than leaving it to month end. Because again, with a manual team, uh, quite often it's it's a, a he heavy duty exercise at the end of the month, where you may be going back two weeks to correct errors that occurred then. Uh, and with automation, you can do these checks, identify the errors very early, maybe on the day or within the hour they uh, they occur, and get them corrected. Not you know near real time, but not in real time, but but at the point of failure. Great. So thanks, Adrian, for that uh, insight and deep dive into automated controls and um, validations in SAP. For listeners interested in the Arla example that uh, Adrian talked about, there we have um, a couple of uh, videos on the Redwood YouTube channel, uh, a, a workshop video and an interview that where Arla is talking more about. Um, it's finance automation uh, project and uh, the benefits it's achieved from that. So please do go and check that out. Um, otherwise, listen out for more episodes in this uh, Finance SAP series. And uh, until next time, uh, thanks for listening.